So I'm going slightly towards upper airway resistance syndrome now. Maybe one form of upper airway resistance syndrome is that you have a very, very low arousal threshold. Even minor little permutations of your breathing wake you up. So you get arousals, even though it doesn't get picked up on the sleep study. I know someone's mentioned it here. Can you have a sleep study that's not picked up? Sleep study? Yes. So that's one of them. If you have upper air resistance syndrome, and it's because of the low arousal, even though the sleep tech can't see a problem on the, on the trace, you seem to be woken up because even the slightest little change in their breathing, even the noise sometimes is enough to wake these people up. And it's not that they've lost oxygen or that there's any real problem. Or, you know, I talked about muscle responsiveness and uh, loop gain and stuff like that. It's none of those things. They're not losing or gaining, losing oxygen or gaining carbon dioxide. It's just something in some sort of change in their respiration has meant that they've woken up. And so those sorts of people may, sorry, just wait one minute. Hello? Cleaners, sorry. Live, that's the problem with live. Um, so that may be one reason why people get upper air resistance syndrome, but there is another way. Or they could have really, really high loop gain. That means uh, the, the slightest little bit of um, holding your breath, the slightest edge of carbon dioxide going up, makes them take really deep breaths, work really hard to breathe. And that, that the work of breathing is the thing that makes them tired in the morning, really stresses them out. Um, someone keeps trying to come in, sorry. Hello? No, thank you. I don't need any cleaning. Uh, no, I'm just in a meeting, sorry. <laughs> God. Um, so this is when I've just said this, um, the breathing really hard, trying to get rid of the carbon dioxide. Um, and the next one could be really high muscle responsiveness. The muscles are working really hard to keep the airway open. So you can't really tell there's a real problem but you're working so hard that you feel knackered in the morning. And so there's all sorts of reasons why we could have upper airway resistance syndrome. Or it could be that these are all completely different disorders and we just haven't got the name for all of these yet. And looking at it in terms of phenotypes, which is why I spent so long on that, 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 um, uh, that slide, is a way to understand upper airway resistance syndrome. So instead of thinking, oh, it's just rarers or it's just flow limitation, Think of it as phenotypes or different types of distress, or just you can see people struggling on a sleep study. Without looking at the numbers, look at the, um, the graph, and I'll show you some graphs later. The other thing could be that we haven't got a clue what we're doing. And I, I, I think if someone says, I completely understand upper resistance syndrome, they're lying. I don't think anyone knows about anything about obstructive sleep apnea either. We're making this up as we go along, and we're just trying our best. You can tell by the American Academy changing the rules every year that nobody knows what they're doing. So it's something that we're all learning. There is no proper definition out there. And myself and Michael uh, are trying to make a definition, something that we can all agree on. But right now, you have to look very carefully at the sleep study and get a good idea of what it looks like. And I'll show you some sleep studies so you get a better idea of looking at sleep studies. And I've got a, a video on sleep studies, but I'll try and go into a little bit more detail here. And I'm sorry that this is complicated, but hopefully you're following me along with this.